Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the people that bring you Photoshop User Magazine, the NAP member website, and all kinds of other cool stuff. Uh, my name is Matt Laskowski and I'm joined here today by the other Photoshop guy or one of the other Hold Photoshop on. guys. Hold on, let it simmer. Look. There's your name right there. Let oh, that look, simmer. Okay, okay. Let, it, let it simmer. Okay. Now you can come to me. Now I am joined today, because his name is up here, I can now say it, Mr. P. Collins. Yes. How's it going, guys? Good to be here. Another fun, exciting episode. Glad feel, to have you here. I, I feel blessed to be next to like the Photoshop guru yes. man God something, himself. Something. Yes, I am something. So. All right. What well, do we so got? hey, that was a smooth transition. Yeah, Guess what? <laughs> Peach Pit has a I, great... I tossed one up for you. A great... Bumps that spike. Great... Digital ebook deal. If that's, you go that's to a digital book right there, that is no. This is a analog version of the digital okay. book that they can get. I did this as a as a reference so they can see. Gotcha. If you go to peachpit.com slash Kelby TV and plug in the coupon code code Kelby TV, I know it's sad. It really is. <laughs> One you of will days. get forty percent off this digital version of this book, but the offer ends eleven four. Peachpit.com. Cool. Great Your book. book. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, Matt, you have a tutorial for us, don't you? Speaking of Lightroom. Did you see how I did that with my voice and all? I'm really <laughs> that excited. Was good. That was good. All right. So, uh, yeah, I was going to jump into my tutorial this week, which is uh, using Photoshop and Lightroom together. All right. So, because Lightroom does a lot of things, and, uh, and I can't begin to even go into all the different things that Lightroom go, that does here. Um, it does a lot of things. There are times when you need Photoshop. So, I wanted to show people how to work back and forth between the two. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do here is if you come up here to the Lightroom menu, and this would be the edit menu on a PC, uh, you're going to see something called preferences. So, just go to your preferences, and there's an option here called external editing. For the most part, I leave, I leave those preferences set to their defaults, all right? Uh, file format, TIFF, PSD. You know, I, I know PSD is Photoshop's happy place, but for some reason, if you, if you pick PSD, Lightroom goes into this big, long explanation of why you should not use PSD. So uh, I just leave it on TIFF. I figure that they know best. Uh, color space, it's kind of like resolution. Start high, right. you can always shrink it down. So Photo is the biggest color space that's out there. Start big, and you can always shrink down to Adobe RGB or sRGB. Uh, bit depth, again, kind of like resolution. Start big. You can always shrink down if you need to, uh, and we'll, we'll actually talk about that a little bit later. Resolution, leave it at 240, and uh, compression, yeah, who cares? So, uh, <laughs> no. uh, compression, just leave that one to the, to the default of zip. So now, we're gonna go into the develop module, and, uh, and let's go through here and just kinda do a couple of quick tweaks to the photo. I'll probably pull the highlights back. You can see it pulls back some of the area up over their, uh, their hair there. Not really any shadows to speak of. Uh, whites and blacks, I always hold down the Option key on Mac. Drag my white slider to the right. Option key again, click on blacks and drag the black slider to the left. Okay, and you can see, once you see a couple of those little specks, that means that you have a good white point and a good black point. Uh, let's see here, vibrance is a good way to kind of boost the color a little bit. Might bump up the exposure, just the overall exposure. Right. And then I'll finish with a, uh, a brand new tool that's in Lightroom 5, which is that radio filter, because what it does is it's kind of like adding a spotlight like right onto the people, because I could come down here and I could go to the vignette. All right. and I could add a vignette, but what happens is, is I'll eventually start to darken her head, and that's not really what we're looking for. So if I go to the radio filter, just bring the exposure down, and uh, I can change it later. I'll just click, and now it's like putting a spotlight right onto the people in the photo. That's before, that's after. And then you can always tweak it after. You know, if you started off too much or if you started off too little, uh, you can always adjust that setting. And there's a feather setting down here which kind of softens the transition. So for, for the most part, you know, I, I think we've done, we've done the Lightroom work that I would do to the photo. So I could tell you, when I took this photo, I thought you know, it was mom and daughter, and I was like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a cute picture, and I, I, I ran, I grabbed the camera, I thought I captured a good shot of them. And I showed it, and the mom loved it, and the girl, the, the girl and, and you know what, as soon as she said it, I saw it, she's like, look at my hips. <laughs> 
And and I'm looking at it, and, and it's, it's not her fault. It's my fault, because look at the way that I posed her. They were standing there before this shot, and they were standing there like kind of next to each other, and it looked very sterile. And I was like, lean into your mom. So what did she do? She leaned into her mom, and what's that do? That kind of kicks your hip out, and it's just, it's, you know, there, there's nobody that would like that. So that's one of those places where we'd have to use Photoshop, because Lightroom really can't do it. So we're going to come up here to the photo menu, Go under Edit In, open in Photoshop. Mine says Photoshop CC. It could be CS6, CS5. Uh, any version is going to work just fine. And what it does, it makes a copy of your photo. It brings you over into Photoshop in about uh, seven minutes. And then, uh, and then, so now we're here in Photoshop. So now we can do all the layer stuff that we have. So Command or Control J will duplicate that layer. I'll come up here to the filter menu. We'll go to Liquify, because Lightroom does not have a Liquify filter. And then I'm just gonna use a large brush here. I'm gonna use the very first tool and we're just gonna nudge that over just a little bit. Just a little booty bump. Just a tiny bit. And then I can pull those edges back out, make your brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. And I can bring those little edges back out. And while we're here, just a little, again, just a little tuck. Because Mom, we can. Mom will thank you. Yeah, and, and you see, look at the pot. You can kind of see the pocket sticking out down there. Make your brush a little smaller and kind of tuck that into. All right, click OK. And now if I hide that layer, you can see that's before, that's after. Boom, chick. We'll dance. But uh, again, and I, it wasn't her fault. It was my fault for even, for even posing them that way. Uh, now, when we're done, all we have to do, and here's, here's what you do to keep the link alive. You just go up to the file menu. You hit save. It saves the image. You don't change the name. You don't change the location. You don't change anything about it. You just save the image, close it after it's done saving. You close it. And then you hop back over into Lightroom, and now you're going to see it's made a copy. So there's our original file, and then there's our edited image. And if we ever want to go back, all you got to do is go Photo, Edit In, open back up in Photoshop. It's going to throw up a dialog box this time. You just click Edit Original, and it opens it back over into Photoshop with the layers, with everything that you, uh, that you had before. So that's, that's kind of how to work back and forth between the two. The one little tip that I have for you, is if things start to bog down a little bit, you could always come over here to image mode. See it's 16-bit? You can go down to 8-bit. The only time you really need to keep it at 16-bit is if like, you really killed the exposure or you killed the color balance or something in the photo. 16-bit will help you recover it. 8-bit works just fine, and, uh, and it'll help Photoshop run a little faster, too. That's awesome. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. I've got a quick little tip and we're going to wrap some stuff up. So join us right back here in just a moment. All right, we are back, and uh, Mr. Pete Collins has a, uh, you got a little tip for us? Just a, a quick tip, kind of goes along with what you were doing over in Lightroom. You know, when you, you're applying different things and you want to apply some sharpening over in the develop module, mm -hmm. here's a little tip for you. If you, sometimes you just want to sharpen certain areas, you don't want to sharpen the skin and add stuff there. Well, you need to know what kind of is going on if you're going to apply a masking to it. Yeah. Well, if you hold down your Alter Option button, just like before, you can drag the slider and see the areas that are going to be infected. Mm. Only the white areas are going to be sharpened and the other areas are going to be masked out. So you can have a visual yeah. cue of what's going on with your sharpening right over there. And that option, Alt key, actually works in a bunch of different that, places. It's if, a super power tool button. Yeah. If in doubt, just hold on the option or Alt key and uh, you never know what you'll get. All right, so uh, Pete, does that bring us to giveaway time? It does, but first we got to remind folks that we have the Fantasy Photoshop League. I they like made this. sure that I said it correctly. Fantasy <laughs> Photoshop League, and you need to go in there and check it out. And uh, I just wanted to, to give somebody a couple extra points here. By If we go quickly to my screen, look at this. I'm going to take 
the ruler tool, and look how big that eyeball is. Wow, you can measure There you it. go. I measured it with the ruler tool. Ah. And that's how you get points. You pick certain <laughs> tools, and if we mention them on here, you may get points. But it's a that, risk to choose the obscure tool. I know. You've, you got to know. Th you've got to get in our minds, and depending on who's going to be hosting, points could come your way. <laughs> Maybe not. I can also take bribes. I like I'm it. just saying. All right, giveaway time? Giveaway time. We are uh, giving away an app membership, correct? An app so membership. you get a, a, a one-year membership to the NAPP if you already have or if you're already a NAP member. We'll just extend you by a year. Uh, you will also get a copy of On One's Perfect Photo Suite 7. And um, anything else? Nope. What am I missing? That's it. Okay. That's it. How to do it. Matt. How to do it is they come How over. How do you do it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, by the way, while I'm talking about this, if you want to know more about our promo, simply go to photoshopuser.com slash promos to find out more about the Fantasy Photoshop League and the other things that we're going to be doing. They're going to give you a great heads up about what's going on. Now we jump back over. What I should be talking about now is go to kelvytv.com slash contest, and you go down here and choose Photoshop User TV, fill in your name, email, website, comments, and you will be in the running for a year's NAP membership and also the prize giveaway. Sweet. I like it. Yep. Guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in here to Photoshop TV. On behalf of everybody uh, at the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, Mr. Pete Collins, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time.